Welcome to the Running Refresh Podcast, where hot takes and debates on the sport of running are more than welcome in the studio and for the good of the sport. Running Refresh is hosted by Logan Lummel and his refreshing guests. Yeah, all set. All set. So here we are with the one and only Richard, the the scientist, scientist. Brown. For sure. For sure. So Richard was a top 10 freshman in the nation. Yeah. In the 800, his freshman year. He's now heading into his junior year at... Western Illinois University. Western Illinois University. 148, 800 meter runner. 47 seconds in the 400 on some relays and 48 in the open. Yeah. Um, second all time in the 800 outdoor and indoor for WIU behind Akeen Colley. <laughs> <laughs> All American Akeem Cauley. Yeah. Uh, school record holder in the 600 indoor with the 119. And I've had the honor of running with him on the 4x4 sometimes. And oh, we, yeah, share, for sure. we share. For sure. We share a school record in the 4x4, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, so just introduce yourself. Where are you from? And what are your passions besides running? Okay, so. As men say it, I'm the scientist. <laughs> so I'm really from Jamaica, Westmoreland, Jamaica, and born and grew there basically for my last 19, 20 years of my life. I uh, came here my freshman year. Um, I grew up in a countryside, mid country, midtown area side. So coming to Western was pretty much within my type of culture like it didn't feel much different from home just a lot yeah. of corn fields but you know i got used to that um very humble person like being humble is my thing um god comes first you know everything i do i pray strong believer in the christ you know for sure um, for sure yeah so just a little bit about this podcast so running refresh um, it's hosted by me, Logan Lummel, and I'm a future teacher, coach, current runner. Um, used to be a soccer player, as you see, by my Minnesota United scarf. Yeah. Um, and just hoping to provide some unique perspectives, like Richard Brown, as you know, the scientist. Yeah. Um, and just talk to runners about some of their passions besides just running, as well as their running. You know, Richard's a very talented athlete, but he's also a talented chef. Among other things, um, you know, runners yeah. have stories, and I'm here to find out what they are. Um, if you have a unique perspective of your own, feel free to reach out on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, the likes at Running Refresh. Give, give the, the pod- man up. Yeah, give the podcast a like, subscribe on YouTube, leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. That really helps it us get the word out about the good news such as my man, Richard. So, how did you get the nickname Scientist? Ha, <laughs> man. <laughs> this man asked me the first one. Okay, Scientist. So, I transferred high schools in Jamaica, and I went from Froome Technical High School to Rossi's High School. So, growing up, I was really talented, so... It Jack of all trades, master of a few. Basically, yep. that was who I am. And I went on my dorms the first day, and what happened was the kitchens were not working, and I had to cook some food in my dorm, and I made it happen with magic. <laughs> I can't you tell you how I cooked it up I did. in the lab. I cooked it up in the lab. Made and some formula. Yeah, I found out that while I was there that um, I left my charger home. So what I did was like, I found two wires, cut them up, connect it to my battery, push it in the wall out, <laughs> get a few capacitors and from the electrical lab yep. next door. And I had my phone charging and it wore the whole camp. And everyone was like, who is this crazy guy? Like, who's this crazy guy? <laughs> Scientist. It's a scientist, you know, <laughs> and they found, they went by nicknames, nicknames until I told them, yeah, I want to do biochemistry in the future. Yeah. And that was just where it stuck. Like I said, I want to be the scientist. And they were just like, your name is a scientist. And 
everything I did yeah. from that day now just made it stick more and more. Yeah, and what's your major? And then, like, what are your future plans currently? Oh, so I'm a biochemist. I'm doing biochemistry in college right now. You're yeah. my undergrad. Want to do it, go to med school, and after med school, I want to do incredible. some. incredible. Oh yeah, do some pathology, um, drug, um, drug development. I want to go in that because I want to help people with arthritis. My mother has arthritis, so that's a big part for me. Yeah. And like, um, I want to be an entrepreneur. So this oh, jerk yeah. business, you already are. Now, <laughs> yeah, I, the jerk business is not stopping here. It's oh, gonna, I know. You guys gonna know about it ten years from now. It's gonna be big. That's you know? awesome. Yeah, I yeah. love that. So outside of running, you spend a lot of your free time fishing yeah all right so can you tell us about that you know a lot man yeah so like what's the biggest fish you caught that's a good place to start <sighs> biggest fish i caught okay i ain't gonna i ain't gonna be a, a, a give you any fisherman stories i'm giving you a true story today <laughs> <laughs> okay let me see biggest fish i caught um i think i caught an eight pounder before yeah. eight pounder um my biggest fish was like an eight ten pound um, catfish. Okay. That was my biggest cat. Um, show, show us that with your hands. How big is that? Um. So, um, catfishes are long, mm -hmm. right? So it's like this. I actually have the picture on my phone. Yep. Like, it's like this Something long. Like that. <laughs> They're black, long guys. Yeah. And I can tell you the backstory behind that too. So go for it. Broca, Coach Broca, which our current coach yep. now, he has an uncle, and me and his uncle is like really good friends. Like he's a grandfather I never had, and we went out, and how we do it is, we um get some bottles and we tie a string onto the bottle, and we put a LED light in it, and we sit around a campfire in the night, and we put on some catfish bait on it, and we put out like ten of them in the pond and we have a little boat and me and him and his grandsons we just be there watching them and then the moment you start seeing the the the, the bottle sink and like it's going up and down the pond and you know something is going on uh -huh. so you go out you catch it you catch the bottle and the hard part is pulling it up for sure because you're gonna have to pull it up and when you pull it up, that's the ugliest mother you're gonna see. <laughs> like, that's like, <laughs> like, they make a weird noise coming up, man. Like, they come up on big <laughs> man. That you gotta hold him. So, my first catfish was my biggest catfish, <laughs> and I lost him. He oh came boy. out and I almost fell out of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> I was almost followed up the boat. Yeah. I mean, it really sounds like you've made a home away from home here in Macomb, you know? Yeah. And yeah, that's awesome. Fishing with coaches, relatives, and all that. Yeah. So, all right, you got a boat. Yeah. Just imagine it. And you have two seats. Okay. So, who are the two people that you'd fish with? Where are you fishing? When are you fishing? Okay. Two people I will um, fish with. Number one is Gene, that's our coach uncle. Yep. Definitely would fish with him. Like, he's could, be, could be anybody. Good famous or fame. that you know. Oh, famous person. I mean... I mean, that still could be one of your seats, you know? If it, yeah, I mean... I don't mind having like Jasmine on the next side, yeah. you know, just in case the boat goes out to sea and we can't come back. I got somebody to make some case with. <laughs> and, who's, and who's Jasmine? Jasmine is my girlfriend, man. For sure, yeah. For sure. I know that, but the people don't know. Oh, yeah. We got to tell them. She's my girlfriend. She, yeah. she doing her. Okay, she, I she see. Got, she got her status straight. Yeah. yeah. So, so when are you fishing? What's the perfect time of day for the scientist? Perfect time of day. You know I like it warm. Mm -hmm. So, um, really and truly, it's just when the fish bite. So yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get up. I'll get up from six a.m. to eight p.m. just to catch a fish. For sure. So there is no perfect time of day. Just bring me out there. I'll catch those. And then where? Huh? And then where? You got a you got a spot in mind, or are you keeping that secret? 
<laughs> I keep that secret. Okay. So around Macomb, you're also known for your cooking skills. I mentioned that. Yeah. So I've personally had some of your jerk chicken. I yeah. recently had some of your jerk chicken. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Although I can't handle spicy things, I do enjoy it you know it's for worth sure. blowing my nose for and crying like a little bit of that, man. <laughs> it's good so what are your other specialty dishes okay well, so really and truly um i was brought up in a culinary home so mm-hmm. inventing dishes is like my thing so at the moment i have so i got brown stew brown stew chicken i got my own version of curry chicken you know, mm-hmm. um, it's not just your regular everyday curry chicken. It's like a curry chicken that when you eat it, you be eating the bones, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> that, I, it's good. I'm not lying to you. I got steam fish. That's like one of the healthiest fishes that tastes good that you'll ever have. Like a lot of my specialties are food that is from my background Mm -hmm. but i make my own twist to it yeah you know so i even have a um a steak special that is only me who can do that like yeah it's very authentic very authentic to me you know so i got my different dishes man yeah i haven't had jerk chicken like yours you know oh yeah there's nothing like it you can't find it nowhere i do my studying and I just constantly go at it, and I never just stop at the beer minimum. I prefer to spend and put expensive stuff in it, and I be like a Chinese, but more like a Chinese European where I put good stuff in and try to sell a lot. So eventually I'll make something for me, but at the end of the day, I left. You were concerned taste. about the product. Yeah. Yeah. The product sure. is my thing. Yeah. I don't care about the profit. If I make a profit, I make yeah. a profit. So where where can they find you and your culinary oh, skills online? Okay, so you can find my page at um Richard underscore eight hundred meter, the scientist. Um <laughs> you can find our culinary page at Happy Time Food and Drinks. Um, our website is Happy Time Food and Drink, www.happytimefoodanddrink, happytimefooddrinks.com. <laughs> you know, you can just send us a snap at um, Scientist Brown. That's okay. us. That's and us. Then, and then you'll hook them up with all the good stuff. I'll hook them up with all the good stuff and more. Okay. So what other products or things have you cooked up in the past besides food? Maybe some skincare or... Okay, yeah. So I still have my skincare line, Mm -hmm. which um, for me was something I started when I was 16. Um, Unlike today, I have a better skin complexion than me 16 when I was 16 years old. I had a lot of acne, so... I was a regular 16-year-old scientist, just experimenting and trying to figure out stuff. I mean, yeah, all of these things just really go to show like just how you are as a person. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. But you can, you, can, you can be a little erratic too. Like, Why are you talking about, man? <laughs> I mean, you walked in, right? And then you grabbed my bread and you had some peanut butter and made yourself a sandwich. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> right before the interview. I love it, though. I love it. You yeah, know? yeah. Or like you invited yourself to my brother's wedding. That oh, was yeah. pretty awesome. Oh, we yeah. Had you got to tell me when it is. Man. Yeah. You it's gotta, coming up. I'll let you know. Hey, I got a suit. Yeah. I'll buy another Layton's one. probably listening right now. Oh, yeah. Tell him I'm coming. For <laughs> sure. Hey, hey, let me know the date so I can buy a nice gift. Okay. Let me know I've the date. <laughs> okay, for sure. Might be in Minnesota though. I don't know if you'll. Man, I got a you car. You gonna make that trip? My little VW get up there. Boom, boom. <laughs> 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 we got up there. All right, all right. So, what's the biggest difference? This is kind of changing topics a little bit. Yeah. So, what's the biggest difference from Jamaica to the United States culturally? Would you say? Culturally, um. You're growing in a community in Jamaica. So, you know every neighbor in the community. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there's almost nobody in the community that don't know you or you don't know them yeah. or they don't know your family or you don't know their family. Yeah. And how many people lived where you were from originally about? 
Man, I can if you say, had to guess, <laughs> if I had to say it's it's a lot. Okay, I couldn't guess that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. I'd probably be putting the wrong bigger number than Macomb. It's like about Macomb, probably not super bigger than Macomb, probably just more closer. Okay, so yeah, so. We got lots of layered space, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like, um, you probably ain't going to have a car feel in between a yeah. person's house, you know? So it's I'm more saying? of a communal aspect to things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then how about running wise, training wise? How has that been for you? Kind of the adjustment, like what's different? Uh, maybe the mentality in training? I mean, um, so Jamaica is known for their sprint community, sure. you know, and I come here, um, we in Jamaica know a lot of American training for their way of doing mileage, you know, so we go a lot of speed and you guys are known to do a lot more mileage, you know, so coming here was a big difference because I went from probably sprinting a lot more per week to taking a slow, easy run and trying to understand have my you body enjoyed more. that the easy running i mean i enjoy it sometimes <laughs> sometimes i don't but i'm getting more and more used to the pain and like more understanding my body what i need from what i don't need for yeah. sure so one of the biggest differences i think of compared to like now I'm talking more like the entirety of Jamaica and then like the entirety of the United States. You kind of mentioned a little bit like the geography, like Jamaica, um, you know, you probably know all the top people in your entire running community just because Jamaica as a country, you know, is smaller. Yeah. And so like when you're in high school, is there like a more of a national meet that all the high schools go to or is there right. still like state meets or how does that work? Okay, so... We for like have, the big championship meet. Right. So what we have is we have something similar to states where it's like we have three counties in Jamaica. Okay. We got 14 parishes, three counties, right? And each county don't have the same amount of parishes. But, you know, say Jamaica is this, mm -hmm. right? It's split up into three. Yeah. So all who is in the middle county go to a championship all who is in each end county go to a championship okay and then they qualify to go to um another championship yep but then that's just one part then everything spins around and every high schooler every high school rich or poor goes to one big championship called champs jamaica um um Boys and Girls High School Championship. Okay. And that's where Bolt, Shelly, and Fraser, all the big names, go there and make their name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little different, you know. I mean, there's different national competitions for, like, cross country or track. But, like, you know, it's, you know, people kind of doing their own things. And it's not really the best high schoolers in the nation. So, like, that community isn't as connected is kind of what I'm trying to say so like you know when then when you come to college like i see you and akeen there's like this instant connection like you know all the other jamaicans that seem to be running in college and like even if you don't though yeah like there's such a shared bond just that you are jamaican and like yeah like how is that how can you describe that um a lot of us are coming from very similar backgrounds and um a lot of people who do check and feel it was like a way out or away from stress or away from home like or it was just their passion so um all of us know the good bad and indifferent and like we share such a like even if you're a rich person in jamaica or you're a poor person at some point you share some similarity in background yeah you know you share some form of hardship either you got to take a bus to school or when you get to school you're gonna have to sit in the class with regular kids who are gonna act regular you know and it's gonna rub off on you so um plus 
like the rich does not eat different from the poor because mm-hmm. everybody got fruit trees and a rich kid is going to play with a poor kid you know like like there is not much of a difference in Jamaica you know it just like there's slightly difference in lifestyles that from here to mm-hmm. there but everybody's just connected under a very very similar way of life yeah for so sure so you you meet another Jamaican you know what's up you know and our running community like from once you make it out of Jamaica you come to college everybody know one another yeah you know so that's what it seems like and yeah. i mean you just connect you're laughing yeah you know telling jokes like the instant you see each other at meets and it's pretty cool to see yeah yeah so what are your goals for this upcoming season then in terms of college track I mean, so this upcoming season, I want it to be a different season, you know. Um, came in freshman year 148, and I've been at that personal best until now, which is my junior year. And um, within those past two years, I've got to learn a lot more about myself mm-hmm. and my abilities and what I need. And learning how to share it with my coaches, like, hey, this is what's up. And um, the really hard part is my coaches getting to understand that. So, like, for this season, like, I'm going after a 146, man, in the 800. Like, if I get can hit a 145, I'll hit the 145. But my goal right now is a 146, and that's what I believe yeah. in. Are there any 1500s in you or miles this year? Are you going to be moving <laughs> up a little distance? Uh, I know about all that. Like, my game is if I can run a good mile, I can run a good 15. If I can run a good 15, I can run a good 8. Yep. So at this moment in time, if I can get like a 345, 1500, like, yeah. I'm good. Like, and what was it yesterday morning? <laughs> <laughs> you and I had a little race. Yeah. We had a mile time trial, and you know, yeah. uh, coach wanted us to go through 800 pretty conservative, and so it became a kicker's race. And oh, yeah. Richard was on my heels, and yeah, I was. Kick me. <laughs> Shit. We were just running. Yeah, it was a good time, and yeah. I mean. Right now, we're at just such complete different ends of the spectrum of training. I yeah. mean, like, you're really doing a lot of mid-distance speed work right now, and I'm, like, doing high volume and less intensity. Yeah. So, it was, you know, a real, like, meeting. Right, so, right. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Hopefully, we can do it again sometime oh, yeah. in a real race. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you know, for not sure. holding back, and yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome yeah. for real. So I just have this one story, you know, it's kind of related to confidence. So funny. So like Drake relays, uh, four by eight. Um, I can just remember, uh, you know, we're on, we're getting ready. We're getting our bibs on. Everybody's nervous, this and that, all the teams look down all these other teams. This is right when the Nike dragonflies were coming out. All the other teams have dragonflies. Here's Western Illinois, a little, mismatch spikes and but and me and lucas hofer the other part of our four by eight relay are just nervous as ever but then akeen and richard our two jamaicans <laughs> are just laughing telling jokes and everybody around is just like crapping their pants at the start line like this is what it's like to race with richard and i mean akeen in the past um who we'll probably touch on later, um, uh, just having that type of confidence on your team, you know, even though I was crapping my pants, it made me feel a little better that yeah. the other teams were intimidated by oh, you yeah. too. Oh, so yeah. how important is confidence Very in important. racing, Very especially important. to you? Very important. Like having my confidence is like, like the main thing I, that fuels me. And, like, if I go out there and I feel like I'm lacking confidence in some way, like, I'm going to try and get my energy up. Like, I'm going to try tell some jokes, start looking at the guys on the start line, like, <laughs> hey, man, 
we gonna fight to the line <laughs> like start making jokes like yeah. get my confidence up like get my heart slowed down and like ease some of the cold mm-hmm. bumps and like just like just start laughing and just <laughs> making jokes or you know playing with the competitors yeah so it's important to yeah. me man and then i've we've mentioned akeen a little bit so like how was it like having a keen? Who is a keen? Um, kind of come before you um, or with you to Western Illinois? I mean, so me and Akeem went to the same high school together. Mm-hmm. And in high school, um, I came in high school uh, under his leadership because he was the captain at the time. And Akeem is a little few years older than me. So I came in. And I came in as a middle distance runner to replace him at the time. So I was training under him constantly. And like we constantly would be running off. And like like the coach said, I was a speed person. Akeem was more of a distance Mm -hmm. thing. But the more I can like get within his his zone, it's going to help me. So by the time Kali was out of high school... I was good enough, or uh, actually better, to be able to do what he was doing. Yeah. You know, so like that's how we met from high school, and then. Um, and one thing led to another, and then you ended up coming here right with here, him. Right. Even here. though I mean, because what other schools were you looking at? I was looking in Penn State. Um, I was looking into Nebraska. I was looking into, uh, school in Florida. Um. FIU, yeah. I mean... Tons, I, I mean, those I was, are Power 5 schools. I yeah. was looking into every... Like, for me, I was looking into every school. So not just Power 5 schools. I was looking into Iowa. I was looking into everybody. Um, I was just looking into all the teams that I know have a good middle distance program mm-hmm. where I know I go in, I have a solid team to work with, and I can move up the ranks. You know, so yeah. and you found your home. I found my home right here, man. All right, so that kind of concludes the interview portion. Next, we have the rapid refresh segment. It's a segment where I ask my guests too many questions for them to answer in a timely manner. You know, it can be random, um, it cannot be random, but we'll find out. So, what'd you eat for breakfast? Eggs, sausage, Aww. bread. <laughs> Uh, lettuce, tomato, uh, <laughs> add some milk. Uh, I mean, that's a solid breakfast. Yeah. I just figured I'd ask because I... Banana. I, <laughs> I never know, you know. Melon, you know. Yeah. yeah. That, was, just, that was... That was... That was a big breakfast. That was... No, in our house, we eat very healthy. Yeah. That was a... That was a simple breakfast for our house. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not lying, man. Yeah? Like, eating healthy is the main thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what's something you can't live without? God. God? Yeah. And water. And water. <laughs> what about <laughs> almond milk? Almond milk. Or oat milk. Whatever you're drinking. I don't know. You can live without it? A bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> So what's your favorite genre of music? Dancehall, reggae, soca. I like a little hip hop here and there. I like yeah. the light. Okay, I like this one. Slow love, R&B, for the bedroom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who's I, your favorite artist? My favorite artist, Popcorn. Okay. Popcorn, he's a Jamaican artist. Yeah. That's to be honest, favorite. I haven't heard him. Maybe I should. Yeah, you What's should. his best song? Um, it's a he, right? Yeah, he, uh, he, family. family. I like Bob Marley too. Yeah, yeah. You you know Bob Marley, man. Yeah, we yeah. everybody knows Bob everybody Marley. Everybody know Bob Marley. I like Bob. What's Marley your favorite too. Bob Marley song? She little birds, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with that, man. So, what's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? You're killing me. And what? I mean, that's that's a hard question. You're killing me, man. Like, I know. I know you love your movies and shows. Oh yeah. I've seen on the bus. We've talked. We've talked about movies and shows yeah, on the bus. Man. I love my movies. Yeah. Like you're killing me. I mean, Avengers is going good right now. Yeah. Shit. Even DC is going good right now. I mean, take a hard guess. 
I would say Endgame is top of my list right yeah. now. Um, so you like action movies the best, or? Oh yeah. Okay. Action movies, I, I'll fall asleep in a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. I'll fight the screen, man. Like, like if something seem like you should know it, I'm gonna like do that, shit, do that, shit, yeah. man. You know, like if you should kiss the girl and you acting like you shouldn't kiss the girl, I'm, I'm gonna be mad, man. So I can't what It's hard for me to watch love movies, you know. Yeah. But I I do my I do my fair share of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the last show you've binge watched then? The last show I just watched. Binge watched, or do B- you binge watch? What's That's like when you just like watch it all at once. All at practically. once. Practically. Not, I mean, not back to back, but like, I mean, you like if you watch three seasons in like a couple of weeks or something. Okay, um, well, it's just one season. Yeah. But we took like two days, <laughs> me and Jazz, two to three days. Yeah. And we open it up and we see that each episode is like one hour. It's called mm-hmm. The Sandman. It's new on Netflix, and like he's they they call him Endless. Like they do like dreams. Like it's like. Divide got up into several people. He's like the one who is responsible for okay. our dreams. And like, this shit is sick, man. Like, you gotta watch it. Like, it, it's sick. It's sick. <laughs> I'll put it on my list. Yeah, this okay. time, man, man. Three days I took, and I probably watched what, 10 episodes. Okay. Yeah. So, man. what would be your dream job besides running? Or is running your dream job? Nah, running ain't my dream job. <laughs> ah. Um. I would run for a long time, yes. I want to run for a long time. That's my plan, to do running and keep my body strong for a long time. And you're, time. I mean, how much eligibility do you have anyways left? I still got three more years yeah. left. Yeah, so. That gives you a good cushion. Yeah. Get stronger and Get stronger, keep running. Do whatever I want to do, you know. Yeah. Get some gold medals. But dream job, I'd like to be a pathologist, you know. If it's not a pathologist... Um, I want to do something that help people. So if it's not a pathologist, I do a, be a doctor, you know, or a surgeon or something. Or if it, if I can't afford that, I go be a computer whiz kid. <laughs> if I can't do that, I be an entrepreneur. I own my own. Well, you already are. Well. Yeah, but I'm going to have to take it more serious. That's true. It just can't be the side job anymore. <laughs> it's not it got to be the main job. Yeah. You know, so I take it like real serious. Yeah. I want to own a funeral home. So you got... You've you got, got some goals. Yeah, I got big goals, man. So this is a little deep. What would you want written on your gravestone? Man, that that's so <laughs> deep, man. Come on, man. I don't Come even on. know where I thought Come of this on. one. Where did you get that one? That's I don't too know deep. That. That's too deep. I never thought of that. Yeah, like what's your legacy? Ah, uh, my legacy. Yeah, I mean that that's your your gravestone, right? Like people don't even know you. They see that. They see that. Yeah. My legacy. The man who lived by his words. Yeah. Yeah. The scientist. The scientist. Would you want the scientist on your grave? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You live by it. Yeah. For sure. The scientist. Put it on top. The scientist, the man who lived by his words. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I don't think there's any better way to end the podcast episode besides that. Well, I've got a marker here. So while I'm doing my outro... You can sign the table. Habibu, Olin, and Isaiah have all now signed it. Okay. So you get to sign it however big, wherever you want. Oh, however big. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So if you're still listening to the podcast, please leave a like on YouTube, subscribe, um, share, you know, tell your mommy, your daddy, your bald headed granny. Uh Review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, comment down below. Richard, where can they find you on social media once okay. again? You can find me on Instagram at scientist800 meter, Richard underscore scientist800 meter. <laughs> <laughs> or you can find me at happy time food 
um, and Instagram to our um, my website www.happytimefoodanddrinks.com and you Snap, got anything else? Scientist Brown, A.R. Richard Powell on the Facebook. Okay. I don't use that, so don't hit me up on it. But. You got anything else for us? Um, hey, hit the man thing up. Watch the broadcast. This man doing good. Um, All right. You know, well, recommended by the scientists. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday if you're listening to it. Right as it pops out, and that's all I got for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for joining me. Oh.